Hello one and all, my name's John Clare, this is John Starcar, and as always, you are very welcome. Now, today's piece that I want to talk about is quite a sentimental piece to me. It's a piece I like to call Wendigo. Now, I'm going to bring up a few here now. Now, it may not be obvious to you right now as to why it's sentimental, but let me explain. Now, my nephew, Aaron, 11 years old, absolute sweetheart, loves monsters. And, you know, one day we were on the phone and he turned around to me, Uncle John, can you draw a monster? I said, what monster do you want me to draw? And he goes, can you draw me a Wendigo? I was like, of course I will. So I did. And as a result, we have this artwork here and now we can talk about it. What we'll do now is we'll go into the methodologies. We'll walk through the piece and how it was created. And uh, we'll do that now. So here we are. This is Wendigo. So, and we are now in Procreate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the usual thing. I am going to go to Canvas and then Canvas Information. This piece was started in February and I haven't signed it for some reason. I'm going to have to rectify that. This is actually done in 16 hours and nine minutes and only used 4,268 strokes. So obviously I was a little bit more economical with my mark making for a change but not economical with my time. That's just the nature of creating a piece. I mean, for me anyway, I mean, if a piece is under 20 hours, I think I don't think, I don't think I've done too badly to be fair. But anyway, so let's go into time-lapse replay. There we go. And I don't know if you know anything about the Wendigo. Uh, for those who don't, and from what little research I've done into it, essentially it's a Native American sp uh, spirit with a deer's skull for a head and and it's quite you know it's quite a terrifying looking beast to be fair uh long you know long man's body long limbs it's quite a creepy looking thing so what i did was i basically found myself a deer a deer skull reference if i find it i'll bring it up for you here now you can see that yeah i use that as the reference i don't know i mean the drawing itself is like you know as i normally do like i, I kind of rough everything out first initially i was i was going to use the kind of the neck vertebrae but I just decided against it because I looked on Pinterest and on Instagram and other, just to kind of give, give myself an idea of what a Wendigo would look like. And in the main, it's just like a deer skull head with weird eyes and a, a kind of almost like a, a werewolf-like body, if that makes any sense. That's what I did. And also I figured I might as well, draw, you know, have rather than it having like empty eye, eye sockets, I draw a deer eye in there as well. Because deer eyes look, well, you know, if you actually look at a deer eye, they look weird, especially kind of like the horizontal pupil. Just the usual sort of thing, just kind of sketching out as I go. Uh, the hand, I used my own hand as a reference. I was kind of sitting across from a mirror and I thought, oh, well, I wanted to kind of, you know, have something else in there rather than just be a profile shot. So I used my own hand as a reference. And there we go. Just kind of most of the time taken on this was actually taken during the skull, I would say. You know, my recollection of creating the piece. Just kind of like doing my usual mark making, my usual shading, my kind of weird little cross-hatching style, picking out the details, drawing in teeth, which are usually a pain in the ass. Bring it out again. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I, I put text along the side there and I kind of liked how it looked, but it wasn't too shy. Again, this is the thing is like, because I don't set out a piece ahead of time, I'm very much kind of like, if you like, I'm finding it as I'm working on it. I know that sounds a bit cornball, but that for me is very true. I'm kind of trying to find out exactly what the piece is. I mean, sometimes I've got the composition fairly quickly and I've got a very clear idea of it, but sometimes it does take a bit of working at it and working through it in order to get to where you want to be with it. And there it is again. I mean, like, as, as I say before, like my, my initial sketches tend to be quite rough and very loose. And then I come back later and tighten them. And then, then I start um, doing my shading. Also, I think I did use layers with this piece, but I'm not too sure I've kept, I, did I keep those layers? But, but yeah, I mean, like just drawing the hands. I mean, like hands are a pain in the backside to draw. Doesn't matter how much practice you get at it. Doesn't matter how many times you do it. They are, they are tricky things. Cause like you got a lot of knuckles, a lot of digits, a lot of shapes that the hand can form. You know, it's difficult to draw a hand, I think. Just come back a little bit. And also like, I just wanted, like the body I kept fairly simple. I didn't really kind of mess about with that too much. It was just a case for like, it, I wanted it to look like a fairy wolf man body. So it ended up looking like a fairy wolf man body. And then I'm just cleaning it up, give the eye a bit of sheen, a bit more shading in certain areas, and then we're done. That's it. Fairly quick and simple. Now that that's completed, I think we'll round this out now, shall we? Okay, so that was Wendigo. 
just a point um on the previous video i forgot to mention that that piece was up for sale on the website which it is by the way if you'd like to go over there and so will this piece be so two sizes a304 two prices 45 and 75 euros so if you like what we do and you would like to support what we're doing please head over there pick yourself up a print be very much appreciated thank you um, anyway, about the piece itself now, Wendigo, and the sentimentality behind it. Look, I know obviously it doesn't look like a piece that you could get very sentimental about. But like I said, my nephew asked me, like we were on the phone one day, I was calling back to the UK, uh, chatting with my brother, chatting with my nephews, finding out how they're doing. And Aaron was showing me pictures that he drew of various monsters and he was telling me about monsters and everything else. And then I was like, I'm enthused by my nephew drawing, you know, because hopefully, touch wood, he'll follow in his uncle's footsteps and go on to be a better artist than I ever could be. I mean, I'm crossing my fingers and toes that that's what's gonna happen. But when he asked me to draw this, I mean, I couldn't say no, you know, I couldn't make excuses and say, oh no, it's not really what I do, nephew. Uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna make excuses to my nephew. I'm not gonna disappoint him. What I, quite in I found quite interesting about doing this piece, it's kind of, but not in my wheelhouse. If you've been watching the last few videos that we've done on this channel, you'll notice that I like drawing animals, I like drawing skulls, I like drawing animals and skulls. To actually draw a mythical creature, I mean, okay, I've done Hugin and Mooney, you know, there they are, or there they are. <laughs> of course, you know, I've drawn mythical creatures, but you know, mythical creatures with mythical names are not the same as mythical creatures in terms of, you know, it's not the same way as if you're drawing, what would be a good example? If you're drawing a chimera from Greek mythology, the lion's head, the goat's head, the snake tail, you know, all that kind of madness going on. You know, it's not quite the same thing as drawing just a raven that has mythical significance so yeah I, I found this an interesting piece to, to do and i was really happy with the results because not only did i get a kick out of creating it for him my nephew got a kick out of receiving it because i printed it up and posted it out, out to them and he has it up on his wall from what i understand um so yeah very happy about that actually i think that's where the sentimentality comes in it's a cool piece i'm really happy with it and i hope he is too i mean in terms of like actually talking more about it and kind of filling out in that conversation it'd be like art shouldn't just be about execution skill it shouldn't just be about making money um it shouldn't just be about showing the world what you're capable of doing i mean i'm very much of the belief that i would like to earn money and i want to show the world what i'm capable of doing but sometimes it's nice to do things for like silly reasons well not even silly reasons no sentimental reasons you know doing a piece for someone because they've asked you to do it and not only do i hope that my nephew gets gets many years of enjoyment from the piece but also it inspires him to go on and be an artist himself you know i genuinely hope for that the fact that he's shown an interest in it at this age his, his interest in drawing monsters could lead him on to you know creating character designs for video games or movies or other you know or or whatever you know I, I just i'm fascinated to see where it takes him and then hopefully like i'm around long enough to see where it does you know and that for me is wonderful it's amazing i will say this like as of late i'd say most of the work that i do is for in one way shape or form it's personal i don't create work because i think it will sell i create work because i think it's for me it's important to communicate something of myself to give something of myself in my work now whether or not that comes through or not as i've said before look that's up for you to decide you know you the viewer you the consumer of the work you're the ones who are going to decide whether or not it communicates what it is i'm intending to communicate I don't know, man. I mean, like, if I'm doing it for myself and I'm doing it from the heart, then hopefully it will find an audience. And if you guys want to invest in it, then great. If you don't, that's also fine too. I think I'm going to leave it there for now. So anyway, if this has inspired you to create work of your own, brilliant. Share it with the world in whatever way you see fit. And in the meantime, my name's been John Clare. This has been John Starkart. And as always, you've been very welcome. Till next time.